Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a relatively interesting and somewhat unusual topic that involves planets surviving being absorbed or being consumed by a star. And because we know that this is essentially the fate of many different planets in the solar system, including potentially planet Earth, it's actually a pretty intriguing topic because to some extent it highlights that we still don't really understand the ultimate evolution of planetary systems and what happens to various planets at the end once stars like our Sun transform, expand, and then become white dwarfs, remaining in this state for billions and even trillions of years. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of these new discoveries based on various simulations and potentially answer the question of, so is Earth going to survive the eventual expansion of our Sun? And what happens to the stars that do consume planets? And what effects do these planets have once they essentially enter the star itself? But first, let's briefly discuss some of the evidence we have for these unusual planets that very likely survived this unusual period of star evolution where the star basically expands and starts to expel its outer shell. And this is of course something that the scientists today understand pretty well. We know that many stars, including our own Sun, are eventually going to go through a very predictable evolutionary stage where they start to expand and start to inflate dramatically, reaching tremendous sizes. For example, for a star like our own Sun, the scientists expect that the edge of the star is going to reach way past the orbit of Earth and potentially even reach Mars. Although obviously the density of the star is going to decrease as well, so for the most part all of this is going to be low in density, super hot plasma. With this outer shell possessing somewhat different properties to the current conditions around the Sun. One of the better examples known to us today is of course the star Betelgeuse. The star that we've talked about quite a lot in the last few years, simply because of its unusual dimming that lasted for nearly one year. And intriguingly, one of the potential explanations here actually did involve a potential interaction with some kind of a planet. We've discussed this in one of the previous videos in the description. But it's obviously expected that a lot of planets are going to be absorbed by these stars. And as these planets move closer and closer to the center of the star, they essentially get shredded into pieces by tidal interactions. But intriguingly, as the telescopes improved, in the last decade or so, the scientists studying various white dwarfs, or basically the final stage of these stars, started to discover some really intriguing signs. For example, quite a lot of white dwarfs were described as being polluted. They essentially contained much heavier elements on their surface or in their very thin atmosphere, as if they've recently swallowed something that was not hydrogen or helium, and even containing rocky materials. The only reasonable explanation here was that these unusual white dwarfs were actually consuming planets that used to exist here. And these planets must have survived the initial red giant stage. More signs were also detected based on various infrared observations, suggesting that there is some kind of a flat, optically thick debris disk that seems to be present around 3% of white dwarfs discovered so far. And this disk could be a result of a planetary destruction, because in many cases it was way too close to the white dwarf. When this was a main sequence star, this disk would have been inside the star itself, so there is no other way to explain it. But much more intriguingly, and I guess much more recently, were the discoveries of actual planets in orbits around white dwarfs. And one of the most exciting discoveries was made in 2022. An actual physical object, most likely a planet, in what seems to be the habitable zone of the white dwarf, or basically the region around the white dwarf where the temperature conditions are warm enough to potentially allow for liquid water to exist on the surface. Although in this case it's really close to the white dwarf, a single orbit around this white dwarf would only take approximately 23 hours. But explaining the origin of this unusual planet since then has been actually kind of hard. There's absolutely no way it was captured, it also could not have come from the outer regions because its orbit was a little bit too circular, and so the only explanation that the scientists had was that it must have been in this particular orbit even before the star became a white dwarf. Or maybe slightly farther away, but not by much. And because the scientists have been discovering several such systems in the last few years, more and more signs indicated that this is a pretty common phenomenon. Or that there seems to be a way for these planets to survive the red giant stage. Which became the next question. How? How can they possibly do so? And what effects would this have on the star itself? And this is where this new paper comes in. A paper that conducts a few hydrodynamic calculations and simulations to try to work out exactly what happens to these planets once they enter the outer shell of an expanding star 
but to also work out exactly what conditions they need to survive and what effects they might have on a star. And one of the first conclusions here is that it seems to be quite possible for a lot of different types of planets, but unfortunately not for planets like planet Earth. Terrestrial planets, and specifically much smaller planets, are most likely going to enter a kind of a spiral orbit around the star and eventually reach the center where the tidal forces strip them apart. But something else happens to planets similar to Jupiter, or essentially planets large and massive enough to start exerting their own effects on the star itself. In this case, as they travel through the envelope, they start to experience, but also produce, at least two separate effects. The effect known as ram pressure, and also gravitational drag. Or, in slightly simpler terms, they start to push and interact with the envelope so much that it basically starts to move around and shift around, eventually being thrown out of the star itself, which has at least two potential effects, both visible and quite dramatic. The first effect is from the mixing of the material caused by the planet itself. The simulations in this case indicated that the star will start to increase in brightness, sometimes by few orders of magnitude, basically becoming way way brighter than it should be for several thousand years at least. Which by the way already potentially provides explanations for several different stars we've seen so far that surprisingly increase in brightness for unusual reasons. We've discussed many of these stars in some of the previous videos possibly in the description below. But on top of this, it will also most likely affect how fast the star loses its material from the envelope, or basically it makes the star kind of age a little bit faster and sort of accelerates the loss of the envelope and the eventual transition to the white dwarf stage. With more massive planets, such as for example brown dwarfs or objects at least 10 to 13 masses of Jupiter, exerting a lot more effects. And eventually, if the planet is massive enough and the star evolves fast enough, the star creates the planetary nebula around it, leaving behind the white dwarf and a surviving planet somewhere around it. Although, what sort of a planet is of course a question nobody can answer. In this case, because we're talking about a gas giant interacting with extremely hot plasma for thousands of years, it's quite likely that this planet transforms into something completely different. For example, there's a concept known as Ktonian planet that we've discussed in one of the older videos on the channel that should be in the description, that basically talks about these planets that were charred by the star for thousands of years, but in this case it would be even more extreme and potentially with very different chemical properties on the surface. In other words, it's really not a question anyone can answer yet. But calling this a zombie planet, or I guess a phoenix planet, a planet that survived being burned, would not be far off from reality. And according to the simulations, all of this almost always happens when the planet is massive enough, so at least the mass of Jupiter, and when the star expands to at least 10 times its radius. So this is possibly a very common phenomenon, especially around stars like our Sun. But all of the smaller planets, like Earth and Mars, are most likely not really going to have enough effect and are very likely just going to fall apart with time. Which essentially implies that, in our solar system, the terrestrial planets are most likely going to disappear and that's including planet Earth, and planets like Jupiter and Saturn are slightly farther away and so they're unlikely to have similar effects on the star system here. Or basically, we're not going to end up with a similar scenario. But more and more of these are most likely going to be discovered around other white dwarfs, with the majority of these planets very likely starting as what the scientists refer to as intermediate mass substellar bodies. Planets around the mass of Jupiter that transform into something entirely different. And so chances are there are going to be even more discoveries in the next few years, but at this point I think the most interesting question is actually about these planets. What properties do they possess and exactly what do they become, especially if they end up in the habitable zone of the star afterwards? Since we know that some of them very likely end up with a very different surface compared to anything that's known to us, it would be interesting to find out if there's even a remote chance that something like life could one day develop here. And because these planets are going to have billions, if not trillions of years, in very similar conditions, these are actually some really intriguing objects to try to analyze for some of the future studies. But until these new discoveries, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining each channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.